everyone, welcome to Anna Vidya Cruz Piano Well. Uh, this is one of my favorite pieces, <laughs> like I'm sure as well as yours. And um, I'm gonna make a detailed tutorial about this piece where I will show you how I analyze this piece using Piano Well system. Uh, one more time, all the books, all the training program you can get for free, I just love to share this system with everyone. Um, please go to my website artofpianotechnique.com and you can find all the information over there. So let's start our tutorial. Well, first thing first, we're going to imagine every note in the timber of uh, vocal voice and string group of instruments here with movement. Uh, the melody I'm imagining in the timber of tenor, mezzo soprano, this kind of low female voice. Um, in the second part, this is the, of course, soprano. And starting from here. I'm using violins, so the whole orchestra tutti sounds. And in the very last part, uh, this again soprano in the melody. Uh, all the accompaniment I orchestrate with uh, violins and cellos, depending on the uh, octave. So one more time, when I'm playing it in the very slow tempo. I'm sure that I am imagining every single note before I touch the key. Uh, moreover, uh, I imagine the sound in between notes, uh, imagining how one sound gradually goes to another sound. All of this eventually will give me a great legato, great cantabile um, that so important in this piece. Uh, when I'm playing very slow, I I exaggerate every movement. Uh, I mean my wrist movement. My wrist movement one more time follows the melody pattern. If I imagine notes to the left, I move my wrist to the left. If I imagine note to the right, I move my wrist to the right. just want to remind you that every timber, every sound in our imagination, we can stretch to the right or to the left. Um, that's amazing ability we can have. We can move the sound in our imagination in any possible ways. Um, the movement of the note depends on the uh, next note. Oh, the previous note. Okay, it's easy to explain. The previous note. If this note is higher than previous note, then the movement to the right. If this note is lower than previous note, to the left. So for example here, right, 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 left, left, right, 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 left, right. Um, I'm gonna show you how it sounds. flexible and singing and eventually when we play it uh, on the last step then all the movements are absolutely unnoticeable you cannot see them one more time I will repeat it you cannot see these movements you c but you control all the muscle movements inside your hand and eventually you distribute these movements while playing depending on your interpretation of the piece also on this stage, uh, we're gonna find the uh, position changes, and we're gonna circle the notes where we're gonna move our elbow. 
Uh, so one more time, when we move our wrist, we don't move our elbow. Otherwise, if we move elbow, then the wrist doesn't move. So, um, where are we going to move our elbow? For example, here. When we're going from the bass to the melody and back. In every leap, we're going to move our elbow. For example, here. This is big stretch, so this is new position. Over here on the second note, we move our wrist first, then we move elbow, then left. So we circle this note and this note. This note to prepare our uh, position uh, lower. This is very important if we talk about one of the cadences uh, over here. And basically, there are every second note there is a new position. So we're playing two notes in one position. New position, new position, new position, new position. So if you don't move your elbow, this is very, very uncomfortable to play. You can practice it for hours and never get it as you want. So Instead of moving the whole arm, the very last movement, what I suggest is move both hands on the very first pair of notes. So here you move wrist and elbow. Wrist and elbow. Wrist and elbow. So if you need to play it faster, you simply start controlling the movements of your elbow and you simply start moving it faster. And then back, I'm moving over here, left, left, get new position, left, left, left. Starting from here, elbow left, elbow left, elbow left, elbow left, elbow left. Elbow left, elbow left. So basically, move, 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 move your elbow. Again, that does not um, that doesn't mean that you need to move your wrist to the left because this one is left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. But still. Right, elbow left. Wrist right, elbow left. Again, when you play it already faster, all the movements absolutely little and uh, doesn't distract you from from anything. Moreover, it helps you. It helps. Uh, it helps your technique. Uh, and of course, here I move my elbow right here and here. in these big leaps to play it confident because this page you go just with your emotions which you also need to control by the way so if you just <laughs> if you're not comfortable here then every time you need to make this leaps that will distract you from emotion that will distract you from the energy so make sure everything is very comfortable this is what you need to do Left hand wrist left, um, right hand wrist right, but elbows opposite way. Now here, elbows back, elbows inside, elbows outside. <laughs> Make sure that in 
every octave and every chord you still make wrist movements that will bring this um, kind of singing sound so it wouldn't sound harsh you know your head your wrist wouldn't feel stiff here So after that, we start playing it. Uh, after, oh, sorry, after we played it with wrist and elbow movement while imagining every sound with movement with glissando in the timbre of uh, vocal voice and strings, we're gonna play it with intonation, and uh, we're gonna use weight while playing. Uh, if someone's still interested how to do this, uh, it's very simple technique. Um, that you develop, you can watch my lesson uh, called intonation and weight, um, intonation and arm weight, something like that. You can find it in the lessons uh, in the description to this video. So um, I'm going to show you the difference between playing again without intonation and with intonation so you can see how much important to have this ability to have this technique of intonation. So without intonation, it sounds like this. Just like robot. And I can talk while playing, so... Now I'm going to play with intonation and applying weight while playing. we need to figure out how and where we're gonna uh, make articulations. Liszt did wrote some accents in this piece and to Nuto. Um, for example over here um, we're still gonna intonate it with intonation then accents and then no and So if you know this technique, uh, then when you go through the piece, you will notice every single articulation, and uh, you will make it correctly, and that will only open for you more opportunities to express yourself more, to express the image of the piece better. Like here. Again, how to make articulations correctly, we make it through intonation and this technique I detail explain in my lesson called articulations. Again, everything you can find in the description below to this video. So after we're playing with intonation, with articulation, with all imagination and with all the movements, uh, we're going to the uh, harmony. I'm going to listen to the harmony because we're going to imagine sound in the color, in the emotional color of the harmonies. 
There's a beautiful harmony, there's a lot of tension harmonies in this piece, but still it's all about love. I will play for you a little bit so you know how to listen to harmonies when you uh, play it. Sometimes for me, when I started listening to harmonies, it really takes some time for me to tune into this world of harmonies and I can just start with this and play this A flat major like hundreds of times. As soon as I catch this world, then I'm going deeper and I compare these harmonies and I feel this one is more tensed. This is less tense but more like leading to something. but still tension, you know, this never gives you this simple, calm harmonies like sometimes Chopin does. This always keeps this tension, <laughs> even in the beauty, always tension. Okay, finally we come back to it with major. So this is how you do it, you play it with, with pedal and you basically gathering all the notes that um, create harmonies. imagine every sound in the color of harmony with movement and you play it. Then you go into dynamics and um, it's quite simple here. He never put any uh, dynamic marks in the beginning but he, just, he wrote dolce, dolce cantando. So I suppose I just play piano in the beginning and then I make a little crescendo and then again pianissimo. Make sure everything here three notes together in the very first stage make sure that you imagine every three notes together and then you imagine it in the beautiful harmony piano all the color all the colors all the quality of sound we always find on the our fingertip that's why it's so much important our imagination develops our fingertip. I will repeat it many, many times. <laughs> um, yeah, so in the, um, in the middle part, you imagine fort and you imagine sound and huge uh, three dimensional sound of fort and then make all the diminuendo very careful um, and smart sound and the end, so all the pianissima. Now after that you need to find the voicing, you need to find which part of this texture you need to imagine closer and when I imagine that I simply imagine that I'm standing closer for example to the sound of vocal voice and all the strings on the background, this is how I'm doing. Um, and even here I'm just trying to voice the very top violins here. So this one also try to find the melody here so it wouldn't be just something. And this melody imagine closer every time. Uh, when um, the piece comes to this uh, octaves and chord texture, um, just want to remind you we we'll always imagine extreme voices louder in the octaves. Again, by that time you already need to imagine every note in the chord, so it would be easier for you to imagine to bring up the, the, the top one. Um, so basically that's it. After, yeah, <laughs> you come to the point when you need to imagine all the texture in the timbre, in the harmony in the dynamics, in the voicing, with movement, and you play it with correct reasonable movement, with intonation and articulations. 
Um, that's not enough, then after that we're going to sound texture where we imagine every note in three-dimensional deep deep sound. So um, basically because we imagine every every timber uh, very very deep like in the texture of the deep water that will bring additional freedom and kind of flexibility to our wrist so if i'm playing just with um, timber it sounds this way Yeah, I will play without pedal. Um, okay, with pedal, but you will see my hands, they move, they move differently. horizontal line like piece of paper we're going now deep so there is no limits anymore so we're going deep into the keyboard so this is why sound texture is very important um, after that we're going to musical speech musical speech is meaning emotional meaning of every interval second third fourth and so on have different meanings and uh, if we're going to analyze even the melody why my melody f sounds so much expressive? Because I feel the meaning between notes when I'm playing and all of this I express through my intonation. So when I'm playing here, we start with beautiful six. Six means beauty and romance and okay, this is exactly what it is. So when I sing it, I sing it and I feel all these emotions. Unison. Then second, it's a little bit tension. Then back, unison. Unison is like open statement. Then fifth down, more relaxed. Then beautiful third up, and third means again beauty, just like six and down to down so if you're really interested about this and you want to get more meaning out of every piece you're playing right now just go to my lesson called mm, musical speech <laughs> i think i i call it expressive melody or something like this again it's in the lesson uh, in, the in the description of this video i'm explaining about musical speech in that lesson um, I really don't want to make it too long, I don't want to go through everything, but trust me guys, just try to play this piece with musical speech and you will be in awe of the beauty. Um, Alright, so after we play with musical speech, we're gonna go with phrasing and this is the stage where I need to uh, slow down a little bit and uh, try to explain in detail. So with phrasing, um, phrasing is something that gives you natural breath of the music. If you if you if you, if, if you really listen to my playing, you could feel that uh, my music was like a wind. It always flow. It always went somewhere. It always had destination. You, you never got bored to listen to it. Well, partly because it's also beautiful music. <laughs> um, so. All the phrasing we have to express through intonation. Uh, just by knowing where the limits of motive, phrases and sentences and where is the main interval, motive and phrase in all of this, uh, just by knowing this you can never achieve uh, music, you can never achieve natural flow of the music. Uh, like I said, everything is based on intonation, everything you express through intonation because Phrasing is how you distribute energy while you intonate. Um, for example, in the very beginning we have a very simple melody. So this is one 
one sentence. Uh, the limits of motif is one bar. So if I would play by motif, and every time the main interval comes to the first note of the bar. So if I'm playing by motif, I play... Okay, so how to explain it a lot. Now we need to, to uh, find the phrase, and a uh, phrase would consist of two motifs, sometimes of three motifs, and we need to find out where is the main motif in the phrase. So the phrase would go like two bars, and um, as a rule, I would make second motif in the phrase more important. So for example here. This is just like the end of the first motif, this sixth up. The next so this is a phrase. One phrase. And all the time I would make second bar more important. Sorry. would consist of three phrases where second phrase is more important. So this is the first phrase with its own, you know, important motive inside. Now this is the second phrase that I emphasize more. phrase over here where um, pretty like beautiful sentence where the first phrase like that second phrase more important and third phrase less important and every phrase second motive would be more important and every motive the, f the interval that comes to the first beat is more important so eventually this is what we got Inside, it's all logic. Inside, the energy is simply dis distributed correctly. So this is how I'm going through the whole piece. And again, I'm not going into the whole piece. If really many people would be interested, um, how I made phrasing, I made, I might make the file and just upload it later. But it, this is for, for request. Um, also, I just want to mention that in all these cadences, it's really helpful when you make phrasing, for example. That would 
would be one motif. Second motif. Third motif. Fourth motif. Why do I count motif? <laughs> Never mind. So, so that would be the limit of motif. Then you simply unite this motif two motifs in the one phrase and unite two phrases in the one sentence and uh, you got very easily playing cadence. Mm, I basically learned this all piece during a week, five days, five days. So it's easy to make. Now after this we're going to the uh, emotional image and form of the piece. So why do we need uh, to make this emotional image of the piece? I mean, well, we know what this music is about, but uh, the thing is that uh, how many times you try to express emotions and you simply feel like there is a wall in front of you, there is a closed door, your energy does not really go out of you, it's just, you know, accumulating within you, but it doesn't really influence your playing, your performance, your sound. It's only because we don't know how to express uh, emotions through the singing, through the playing. We express emotional image through our intonation. Uh, we can intonate and express through one single interval, uh, meaning of joy, meaning of sorrow, and all of you will feel the difference. This is joy. This is sorrow. Do you feel how vibrations of my voice changes? The same way uh, your way of playing will be changed. Joy and sorrow. Even the sound will change. So the, the same principle we use here to express emotions through playing. When we play, uh, we feel through every single interval that we intonate. I talk while playing because I'm singing, you see. <laughs> so while you play very slow, this space, this space that you go, uh, the space between notes that you go with intonation, with resistance, you feel it with emotional image and you feel vibrations of emotional image between sounds. This is how you achieve uh, successful, you know, conveying your image through music. As slow as this. Trying your best. Feel uh, in the full measure. Now, how you really feel better emotional image through the harmonies. If you were on the stage, if you were on the stage where you were listening on the harmonies, it would already clarify image for you more detailed. But um, in the bigger scale, I would say that this is three parts of different types of love for me. The first one is just a, like a general meaning of love, yeah, it's good. So, <laughs> second part, this is the way where the person really let himself to feel the love. Uh, this is like reality, this is what he experienced right now with this... Um, Climax over here. And just went, ooh, going down. <laughs> um, but while this is Liszt, nothing is good in Liszt music. Never ends good. So that's why over here. That sounds really already like a dream of love. Like a love that, for me, like a love that. Um, never really last, you know, like, never really, uh, well, how to explain, <laughs> this bitterness of love that we all experience after everything. So, um, why I choose this? Because of this, he does a lot of um, tense harmonies in the end, kind of. Minors 
over there and over here. A lot of dissonances. So that's why this is just like a remembering of love and um, trying, trying to hope for next love, but it's still very bitter. Anyways, um, after that you play with emotional image and then we're going to the form of the music. The form of the music is absolutely necessary for us just, just like phrasing. Uh, because this is another way to distribute energy in the whole piece, in the, in the bigger scale of the music when we perform. And like I said before many times, the form has different parts, like in any story. Uh, it has beginning, it has development, it has rising to climax, it has culmination part, and it has conclusion. And all of these, if you can feel it, they differ by, um, by the energy. Beginning is lower and culmination is very high. So this is what I, uh, how I distribute a form in this piece. Uh, the first sentence beginning. <laughs> with the climax, so this is another rising to climax. Then climax. And all of this, the second cadence goes by climax. Then starting from here, I'm kind of making already conclusion here. Conclusion. This is the second part. And the last part again, beginning. Then from here, rising to climax. Then climax. And then from here, it's all conclusion till the end. So basically, three parts. Each one consists of beginning, developing, rising climax, climax, conclusion, and the, the second part is more expressive, more important. Uh, so the last step we do, almost the last, is time. Uh, we're gonna pulsate by the crotches here. This is how I choose and I pulsate while playing it's absolutely necessary and even though I can make some robot and can go sometimes a little bit um, little little bit faster but I still know what the original tempo so then I would come back so I would make a little bit of butter. And every stringent and every retardante you have to pull state while playing. <laughs> Which most of the students never do. And about artistry um, it's about how to play confident on the stage, how not to be intimidated uh, while performing in front of the audience. It's also you can find it in my lesson called Artistry in the description below. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this video, if you think this video was helpful, please share it and uh, bring the joy to other people. Um, thank you again and see you in my next video. Bye.